Several shots, code 33. Thoughts go through your head like I'm I'm gonna die. I'm only 18 years old. I'm gonna die. I, I remember vividly everything that occurred, but it's like I wasn't there. We climbed up into the ceiling tiles and we wrote our names up on the wall so that people knew that we were there. Um, and I mean, yeah. <laughs> Het wordt wel de ground zero van de school shootings genoemd, die van Columbine High in 1999. Twee jongens schoten twaalf leerlingen en een docent dood. Zoiets had Amerika nog nooit meegemaakt. I had just walked into the library in order to meet my best friend Corey. And I remember it was, Corey was the first person to say it sounds like gunshots. And I've got every student in this library on the floor with us. Um, smoke is coming in from out there and I'm a little bit. Okay. The perpetrators entered the library and went methodically from section to section, coming to ours last. And, and they fired numerous shots under our table. Uh, and Corey was killed instantly, and I was hit twice. Zijn hele leven kampt Austin Eubanks al met het trauma van Columbine. 17 was hij toen zijn beste vriend voor zijn ogen werd doodgeschoten. Hij stopte met school. There's healing in community, in connection, in grieving together. I withdrew from that and I turned to substances to cope. And that spiraled out of control. I developed a pretty debilitating addiction that spanned the course of my 20s because I was just wholly unwilling to engage in that grief and that pain because it just hurt too much. I went through a lot of anger and I didn't want to be around anyone from Columbine. Hi, friend. <laughs> Ook Amy Over en Heather Martin overleefden het bloedbad van Columbine en raakten net als Austin getraumatiseerd. So within those first couple years, I did end up dropping out of college. I developed an eating disorder. Um, I dabbled in some drugs, nothing too serious, but I had never done drugs in high school, so that was just something different. I've been diagnosed with PTSD and anxiety disorder. Eric Harris is in my nightmares. It evokes a lot of um, hard feelings for me. So, yep. This morning we're learning more about those harrowing minutes inside Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, when a former student armed with a semi-automatic rifle pulled a fire alarm and opened fire on unsuspecting Parkland. teachers and students. De overlevenden van Columbine zagen in al die jaren sinds hun eigen trauma zeker 70 van dit soort massaschietpartijen op het nieuws voorbij komen. They grown up their entire lives doing active shooter drills. There was a level of mental preparedness for what was happening that we didn't have at Columbine. They knew when they heard those gunshots that they were gunshots. And I think that that gave them an ability to spring to action immediately after and saying that this is unacceptable and we want to be the school that stops it. They say that tougher gun laws do not decrease gun violence. We call BS. They say a good guy with a gun stops a bad guy with a gun. We call BS. I feel like there are far too many people in positions of power that are just willing to accept this as the new normal. That is so inappropriate because we have woven gun violence into the fabric of our culture. We have to bring down that loss of life by focusing on weapons that have the capacity to kill large numbers of people. High capacity magazines, I think, are a huge part of that problem. They wouldn't have stopped Columbine. No. Columbine was in the middle of an assault weapons ban. Assault weapons ban, I think it was from 94 to 2004. Right smack in the middle of it, didn't stop it. So come on in. Patrick Neville is the leader of the Republicans in the parliament of Colorado. And ook he is an overlevende van Columbine. I was a kind of a young punk 15 year old kid making probably a lot of bad decisions. And for me, that was a big wake up call that there's more to life. And I looked at some of my friends who were murdered that day and they were making all the right decisions, doing all the right things. Okay, I need to turn myself around, otherwise the killers win. 
Columbine heeft van Neville juist een felle voorstander van wapenbezit gemaakt. Hij wil ze zelfs toestaan op scholen. En hij sprak daarover, links in beeld, ook met president Trump na het recente drama op de school in Florida. Ik dropte mijn kids af de next day. After the shooting, I was totally scared. I was practically in tears coming up here to the Capitol to do my work, knowing that they're totally unprotected. And I look at the common theme in all these shootings. It's the gun-free zones. They all happen in gun-free zones. The killers target these areas on purpose. My bill's pretty simple. It just says if you are legally able to have a concealed weapons permit, you're able to use it on school grounds. I think it's absurd, a biased opinion due to the special interest groups that control our political processes. Well, the anti-gun lobby, quite frankly, is probably more powerful than the gun lobby. You think so, yeah? I do. Michael Bloomberg spends millions and millions of dollars in the state trying to take people's gun rights. I just, it makes me sad. I'm, I'm a mom. I have to trust that they're going to come home to me and that they're not going to go through this because their mom went through it and, and surely lightning can't strike twice. You know, it was like, you know, but maybe it, it can and, and it's becoming so common. And today I have two sons, uh, ages 12 and 8. My oldest is Caden. And uh, so he's asked a lot of questions about my story and, and he's asked, do I need to be worried when I go to school? And I always tell him no, that, that, that you, you don't need to be afraid because I want him to have a normal childhood. So my best friend, Corey DePooter, uh, he enjoyed the same things that I enjoyed and we both loved to fish and he taught me how to fly fish. And I remember in my addiction, it was something that I just completely threw away because it was too hard. Uh, it was too close to him, it hurt too much to be able to do, and I, uh, frankly, I didn't want to do it without him. And it's something that I've been able to come back to. And now fly fishing is, is a big part of, of my recovery from the trauma that I endured. It's really what I do to stay connected and close to him. 